The Widowmaker is a film that exposes and explains, perhaps for the first time, a heart disease industry that profits from fatal and expensive intervention over accurate and life-saving prevention. It is a truly shocking story. But an Irish charity aims to change the ending of that story. Irish Heart Disease Awareness plans to transform thinking in relation to heart attacks. Supporting this call for change are hard facts and sound science, built up over a quarter of a century. Most cardiovascular disease could be detected much, much earlier with a simple, non-invasive and once-off calcification test. The test produces a score running from zero into the thousands and that score correlates with the amount of heart disease in your arteries. And when it's discovered, heart disease can be treated and managed just like we do with any other disease. But cardiovascular disease isn't just any other disease. It is the world's biggest killer claiming more lives than all cancers combined and the lives of seven times more women than breast cancer. This situation has come about despite decades of verified, peer-reviewed findings from studies of tens of thousands of patients. Most heart attacks are not random events or bolts from the blue. They are not inevitable. Oncologists use mammograms to seek out and identify breast cancers, and women would settle for nothing less. They certainly wouldn't settle for being asked just five questions to estimate their percentage chance of having breast cancer. And yet, this is the approach taken when it comes to the heart. In cardiology, it seems it has to be a crisis before it's a problem. What we want to give you in this short film is a flavour of the overwhelming evidence that coronary artery calcium scoring tells you whether or not you have heart disease, because the calcification it detects only arises in diseased vessels. The hardest fact of all isn't disputed. There's a proven and powerful correlation between the presence of calcium in your arteries and your likelihood of a heart attack, which in a third of cases results in death. But the good news is that heart disease is detectable, measurable and manageable, and lives, instead of being lost, can be saved. In 2007, a study published by the American College of Cardiology Foundation tracked the outcomes of more than 25,000 asymptomatic patients who were referred for coronary artery calcium testing. After 12 years, 99.4% of those patients who registered a nil calcification score were still alive. However, for those with high coronary artery calcium scores, over 1,000, the outcomes were dramatically different. Only 76.9% of these patients had survived. Between these two extremes were many patients who registered scores that were not yet dangerously high, but they now knew that their level of disease would need to be managed. The higher the calcium score, the higher the risk. In another study, over 44,000 asymptomatic patients were referred for coronary artery calcium testing and their mortality rates assessed. 45% of these registered a nil score and 99.5% of them were still alive at the end of the study. So, research has established that the absence of calcification is good news for patients. But what about those people that do register high calcium scores? Well, in 2009, a review of 13 major studies was published covering over 85,000 patients. Its figures revealed that patients with calcification are eight times more likely to have a cardiac event than those without. This echoed a study published in 2000 by the American Heart Association, which discovered that 70% of all cardiac events happened in the top 25 percentile of calcium scores in each age group. Many preventive cardiologists argue for a mindset shift when it comes to heart disease. Their passion is not based on gut, nor hunch, nor intuition. It is based on evidence. In fact, an expert review on coronary calcium in 2008 concluded that overall, coronary artery calcium is a better predictor of events than all the other risk factors combined, since it measures actual disease. The review confirms that traditional Framingham score risk assessment still fails to identify many asymptomatic patients until it's too late. 
The American Heart Journal published a study of over 136,000 people presenting at 451 hospitals after heart attacks. The study revealed that half of them had normal LDL cholesterol. And even for those that are identified, exercise stress tests or angiograms in asymptomatic patients may miss many of the most vulnerable cases because the artery blockages that the tests seek are not the cause of the majority of heart attacks or sudden deaths. Seventy percent of heart attacks are instead caused by the sudden rupture of soft plaque. That's why so many asymptomatic patients go straight from just fine to dead. The real value of the calcification test is that it allows us to accurately detect whether or not there's actual disease in individual patients. Patients that might otherwise be inappropriately classified as middle risk by the framing and population approach. And middle risk is where most heart attacks occur. People with high coronary artery calcium scores are immediately reclassified as high-risk patients. They learn that they have a time bomb ticking in their chest. It is natural, as we all get older, that our calcification score will grow. After all, heart disease is progressive. What is cause for particular concern is when your calcification score grows in excess of the average for your age. That's what the test tells you, that there's disease in your arteries. A 2006 study in the European Heart Journal demonstrated particularly effectively the predictive power for the individual of calcification testing versus other methods of population risk assessment. It studied over 10,000 asymptomatic patients and found that smoking doubled the risk of death due to heart attack. No surprises there. But the study also revealed that a non-smoker with a coronary artery calcium score in excess of 1,000 was seven times more likely to die than a smoker with a score of zero. More than 20 major studies over 25 years have all added to the momentum behind calcium scanning as a strong predictor of future cardiac events. Together, they have accumulated irrefutable evidence that a high calcium score is bad news. It sounds almost too good to be true. So why would someone argue against the widespread adoption of calcium scores and persist with the old system? The skeptics will also point to cost. A scan is expensive at 250 euro. The IHDA asks if you'd readily spend 250 euro to know if your car might suddenly crash and kill you. Or would you rather pay 30 to 50,000 euro for a bypass or stent? That is, if you're lucky enough to survive a heart attack long enough to have the surgery. Critics will say that coronary artery calcium screening does not pinpoint vulnerable plaques. No, but it does identify the vulnerable patients. Like an iceberg, if you have calcified plaque above, you have dangerous soft plaque below. And knowing that would empower people to take control of their own health destiny. Finally, the skeptics will contend that it has never been proven that knowing your calcification score will change anything, that people won't act even if they learn that they have heart disease. Well, two major randomized studies demolish that line of argument. The Eisner trial, published in 2011, demonstrates how undergoing a calcium scan can be a powerful motivator. Those patients that learn their score, who are told that they have a disease and who are shown a picture of its impacts on their arteries, do take action. And what is seen is an association with superior risk factor control. Meanwhile, an analysis in the following year of the St. Francis Heart Study showed the benefits of medical therapy for those at high risk. In a double-blind, placebo-controlled trial, the journeys of over 1,000 patients were analyzed. And significantly better outcomes were noted for those classified as high risk when a preventive approach, including statin medication, was adopted. It's common sense. As with any disease, the sooner you know, the more you can do. Preventive cardiologist Harvey Hecht has referred to what he calls a deadly double standard, whereby the 65-year-old default system of risk assessment in cardiology known as Framingham has never been subjected to randomized controlled trials such as Eisner and St. Francis. The findings of the COURAGE trial, outlined in the most recent European guidelines, represent yet another landmark in the journey of acceptance. It compared patients who received a stent and medical therapy with those that embraced medical therapy alone. The trial showed that conservative management was more effective than aggressive interventionist approaches.
In fact, the 2013 European guidelines recommended that medical therapy should be the default strategy in stable heart patients once a stress test had been passed. We've been inferior doctors in cardiology for quite a long time. We've been waiting for heart attacks, we've been waiting for chest pain, we've been waiting for patients literally to suffer sudden death to jump in there with guns blazing and catheters uh, interacting and trying to save them rather than getting to them earlier before the first event. I think we're really falling short on our oaths to improve heart disease care. Slowly, it seems the message is getting through. The American Heart Association guidelines now recommend that coronary artery calcium testing should be considered for asymptomatic adults at intermediate risk. And that position is echoed by the official guidelines of the European Society of Cardiology. But it has taken 25 years to reach this point, and most doctors in the US and Europe remain unaware of the test and unaware of the endorsement it receives in the official guidelines. The world continues to accept the scourge of cardiovascular death like an inevitable event, a deadly lottery. For one third of its victims, their first symptoms are their last. Many ate well, didn't smoke, didn't drink to excess, and watched their weight. All great things to do, but as individuals, they did not know they had heart disease. But the hard facts about heart attacks show that you can, anyone can, dramatically improve the odds. Now that's what I call a happy ending.